Hey, I'm Alex West. I am a former professional Magic the Gathering player, and I was one of the early testers for Sorcery Contested Realm. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Sorcery is uh, a game like Magic where you take the role of a wizard, dueling another wizard, uh, but the big difference is that you play on a 5 by 4 grid. So I uh, kickstarted Sorcery and um, have many packs of alpha product that um, I've been waiting for the right time to open. And I thought I'd open one of them today and talk about tourisms on this recording. So, uh, you know, packs I think have 15 cards. And uh, there you go. Ooh. So the decks get divided into two kinds of cards, Atlas cards and uh, Spell Look cards. And um, so here we have a, a Humble Village, it's just a common, uh, summon soldiers, uh, it's a pretty good card. Um, and then uh, just going to go through these. Uh, Root Spider, it uh, gets played underground and traps things above it. I think it's a fine card, but nothing special. Um, this card, Recall, teleports uh, minions back to uh, their controller. And uh, yeah, also a fine card. I think I've, I've never put it in a deck, but I can imagine it being useful sometimes. Uh, this card uh, gives creatures flying temporarily. No, no. Yeah, it makes flying creatures have extra movement. Some of the cards have changed since the beta. Um, this is another site. It's an observatory. It says, look at your next three spells, put them back in any order. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. I've generally not played with it because I'm more interested in digging through my deck in different ways. Uh, Bone Rabble? This is a card that I think has a lot of utility. It, um, it says, whenever you play an Earth site, you may summon the Rabble uh, from your cemetery to the site. So every site has um, an element symbol in it. So, for example, this humble village has an earth symbol there. So, whenever someone plays an earth site, Game to Bring a Rabble back is a pretty good value, and there are a few cards that let you sacrifice things for value. Um, so, I think there's some interesting synergies for Bone Rabble. Uh, Beast of Burden, it uh, lets you carry around other creatures, uh, which is kind of a cool, cool mobility ability around the board. Um, that said, uh, I've never found a huge use for it. Um, this one's kind of cool. It's a spellcaster. Costs one, has zero power. Uh, everything has the same power and toughness. And uh, this one, whenever you, whenever it casts a water spell for you, um, you get to scry one. Um, so having the first one of these I think can like greatly increase the quality of your draws. Um, I don't think about putting it in a deck. Uh, these tufted turtles cost three uh, to attack. They um, first time they take damage each turn they ignore it. Um, there are a few synergies where you have things that inflict damage on your own guys. Um, I think they're kind of interesting for that. But in general, for three mana, I'm not that excited about two power. I usually want as much power as I spent mana. Uh, Old Salt Anchorman, uh, two power for two. Stops your guys from being moved by other effects that you don't control. Um, I don't think there's a huge like move your guys metagame, but in a specific metagame, it could be good. 
uh, border militia. This uh, summons a bunch of one power soldiers um, for each site that you have that's next to an enemy site. Uh, it can be a lot of guys, um, so the power rate can be good, uh, good things to sacrifice, and good things for you know, crusade type effects that improve the power of all of your guys. I think it's an interesting card. Um, this uh, camel, so one mana for two power, so it's a pretty efficient rate, and I like putting this in aggressive decks. Uh, sleep. I, I really love the way that they've implemented sleep and sorcery. Uh, your thing becomes tapped and doesn't untap until it takes damage. Um, so one damage is kind of a narrative mechanic for waking things up. And um, yeah, I think it's a low power, short term control effect. Uh, so I don't tend to play with it in constructed, though I imagine if limited is the thing that people do. Uh, it has some value, um, you know, particularly when, yeah, weak, weak removal effect. Uh, wall of air, uh, it stops small airborne creatures from going over it. Um, I don't think that there are a ton of small airborne creatures that are good, so I think this wall is like mostly unplayable. Um, yeah. And then uh, cloud spirit, it's uh, two mana for two power. Uh, it's airborne, which makes it very mobile in movement, plus two. So, um, yeah, it's possibly like the most mobile creature that, you know, people can play. Um, and uh, maybe there's some room for it, like executing some kind of like hit and run gorilla type tactics. Uh, not super sure. Um, all right, so that was the first booster. In theory, one of these was... Uh, a rare or a unique as they are called in this game. I'm just gonna try to figure out which one it was. Or maybe there's a slot that's unique or exceptional. Unique or elite. Okay, uh, so I think no unique in this. Maybe the observatory was elite. Yeah, fair enough, so. Um, and I'm just starting from the the top left and going down. I know some people think that um, Eric's curious that hasn't sorted these things in optimal order. Um, okay, so next pack. Uh, Whirling Blades, an ally can take two steps and then strike everything along the way. This is, I think, a very powerful, like, mobility effect and AoE damage effect. Um, I think it's like very good in battle mage decks and um, if you have like relatively large sized creatures. Um, so yeah, I think it's a pretty great effect. I'm excited to get it. Uh, skirmishers of Moo. It says during basic movement, Skirmishers of Moo may perform a range strike from any location along their path. Um, that's interesting. Um, I think that in a game that is like dependent on creatures, um, which I'm not, I'm not that convinced that the best strategies are heavy creatures. But I think that the ability to, you know, shoot and move is a pretty strong one. So, like as a creature, I like it, even though it doesn't have power equal to its cost. I think ranged and move and shoot are. Yeah, kind of worth the cost. Uh, Buried Treasure, I think this is like an amazing card thematically. It, uh, you summon it buried um, in a territory, in a site that you control, and then you have to have like a creature burrow and then get it out, and then you get to draw two cards. Um, my experience is in competitive play, it's like a little bit much to futz with, uh, but I'm I'm sure in limited, like drawing two cards is good, and um, you're under less pressure to um, resolve it quickly, and the card advantage is worthwhile. Um, this is a kind of cool one. It's uh, Island Leviathan. It's a site uh, that makes a uh, water threshold, but when you have eight water threshold, it turns into uh, an eight power creature, which is really beefy. 
And um, I think this is like very synergistic with a lot of water decks because they uh, generally want to turn sites into water sites. And um, I think mono water plays better than um, some of the other mono element strategies. So this is, a, this is a, like exciting card that definitely would make it into my atlases for some decks. Uh, sea Serpent, uh, I think that this is like super efficient, uh, 4 mana for 4 power, uh, it's limited to being in water spaces, but um, water is very good at turning spaces into water spaces, and most of water's um, kind of cr creature removal specs, and they, they have like a, a wrath effect, uh, submerge everything, so creatures with the submerge power can survive being submerged. Um, so Sea Serpent is like very synergistic with some uh, control strategies. Uh, Disenchant, this uh, destroys all auras and artifacts at target location up to two steps away. Uh, you know, I think that this is a very powerful, like, you know, if certain things are powerful in your metagame uh, and you want an answer to them, this is a great answer. Also, the fact that it's ordinary magic. There's a uh, in Earth. There's a tutor for ordinary spells, so I think this is pretty important. Uh, there's an identical spell in Earth, but this is the air version, and um, you know, I I play them both. Air Air also has like you know, good tutors and card draw, so I think this is like a solid utility effect that belongs in your deck sometimes, depending on your meta game. Uh, Blink. You can move an ally to an adjacent space and draw a card. Uh, the fact that it's a cantrip, uh, which is a magic term for a card that draws another card, is fantastic. Um, the mobility can catch people by surprise, either on offense or defense. And um, ultimately, because the powerful cards in this game are so powerful, um, playing cantrips usually helps you find them. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of Blink. Uh, Apprentice Wizard, very similar, uh, three mana for one power, which is in that kid that's a spellcaster. So sometimes if you have spells that are targeted, um, you know, from the source, that's helpful. Uh, when it comes to play, it draws a card and you know, it makes a body that is useful to sacrifice for things. So uh, when I'm playing air, I basically always play this guy, and you know, when I'm playing, you know, two elements. He almost always makes the cut. Uh, so, yeah, generally a fair fan of Apprentice Wizard. Uh, Scarecrow uh, returns airborne minions to their owner's hand, and then airborne minions can't come to the space. Uh, I think that, like, not enough decks have airborne minions that I'd want to be playing Scarecrow in my deck. Uh, Barry, it burrows a minion uh, or artifact. Uh, I think this is just, like, very solid like spot removal and if I'm you know playing a controlling or mid-range deck um, I feel totally reasonable playing this card. Um, Plume Pegasus, three mana for a three power flyer. Um, it's airborne creatures usually have one less power than their cost so this is a particularly powerful card for its rate. Uh, you know the downside is three power is Lots of things are three power, so um, it doesn't like dominate many combats. Um, I think that if you have some sort of like airborne synergy deck um, where like mobility matters, I think it's probably great. Um, yeah, otherwise it's probably not what I'd want to build with. Uh, Wall of Air again, uh, not particularly playable. Um, Cloud Spirit, I talked about it. Dispel. Uh, it's kind of the alternate to Disenchant, that's in Earth. And once again, I did a pretty poor job of figuring out where the Elite or Exceptional card is. Uh, I guess it's the Island Leviathan. Uh, so, great. Uh, pretty, pretty happy with an Island Leviathan. You know, my perspective is more as a player than collector, so um, my goal in having these boxes is just to um, have things to trade so that I can build whatever deck it is that I want to build. Alright, pack number three. Uh, 
Um, this uh, Cyclops has uh, six mana for six power. Uh, Fire has quite a few uh, creatures at the six mana for six power. This one has a drawback that it's not good at defending. Um, but I still would consider playing it in a fire deck is just a you know, fatty to rant, ramp up to. Uh, Undertow, it um, water site that pulls things towards it. Um, I think that moving uh, units out of place can be really disruptive for opposing players. And I've been really happy playing Undertow. Uh, Quarrel Quarrelsome Kobolds, uh, three mana for two power, and um, they always attack at the end of the turn and will attack themselves if they don't have something to attack. Can they attack at range? It's, yeah, another target adjacent unit. So they have a little range, and so if you're, you know, this is one of those two sided things where they have a cool ability, and if you are able to set up the ability, they um, kind of like outperform their mana cost, and if you fail, they kill themselves. And uh, I think it's good. I think I would tend to try and play with this card. Um, assuming I'm playing a fire deck. Just because like fire decks really want to stack damage, and a versatile source of damage is like repeated versatile damage is where it's at. Uh, this is an elite card that I'm pretty ex like excited about at a high level. It's a nightmare. I think it's very flavorful at the end of your turn for each enemy minion. Uh, you may have it uh, move to an adjacent location or void. So, um, you know, a lot of things, if they run into the void, they um, perish. And um, just making everything run away... It can also be like very disruptive. Um, yeah, seven for seven is a lot to pay. Um, so I'm not sure, outside of a dedicated ramp deck, whether this is like a playable card. And maybe by the time you can play it, um, there aren't a lot of voids left. But uh, scaring guys off the board, you know, is kind of like aspirational fun. Uh, Paladin bats, two mana for two power. Uh, they can fly and burrow, so um, if you wanted a one-stop shop for a creature that can uh, get your buried treasures in the earth and your sunken treasures in the water, uh, it's these bats. Um, yeah, uh, probably good in limited, not the most excited about it in constructed. Uh, Ice Lance, three mana to deal, to make a line and do three damage in the first space site, two damage in the second site, and one damage in the third site. Uh, it's, it can be hard to um, line this up to get maximum value out of it, but um, you, know, you can often get three and two, and honestly, just paying three mana to deal three damage to something is sufficient, so I think it's a good utility effect. And um, water doesn't really have a lot of direct damage, so I think it's, um, it's a pretty unique and Probably a desirable spell in a lot of water decks. Another Sea Serpent. Uh, Rinland Nomads. They um, two power for two mana. They have an extra movement. Uh, they used to be, I think, immune to fire. Now they're just immune to damage from deserts. I mean, damage from deserts is more thematic, but less useful. Uh, the extra movement uh, can make them good in an aggressive deck, like you know, um, playing them on turn two, and then they can be in good position to attack on turn three. So, um, you know, if I had like an aggressive curve fire deck, I would think about playing these guys. Uh, Cauldron Crones. This is uh, three mana for one power. Uh, it's a spellcaster, and when they come into play, you can sacrifice another creature. You may, it's an option, uh, to draw a spell. Uh, I think this is pretty interesting. Um, you know, there are a lot of ways of generating bodies that aren't that useful, including additional copies of Cauldron Crones. And being able to dig through your deck can be strong. Um, so I think that there's kind of a, a cycle of three mana for one power spellcasters 
each color. Uh, I think that the fire one is weaker than the air one um, or the water one, uh, but it still might be good enough. Uh, drawing cards, there aren't a ton of cards that draw cards in this game, and I'm pretty into drawing cards, so um, I think this is maybe, like I want to experiment with it. Uh, it didn't have the sacrifice ability when I was beta testing, so yeah, I, I can't speak to it. Uh, Lightning Bolt, it's a uh, two mana and it deals uh, three damage to a random creature in a space. Um, if you're in kind of like a dedicated burn deck, you're often burning away creatures, so there aren't that many random choices and you mostly target what you want. Uh, in, a, in a deck that's um, less good at creating attrition, uh, this card can be truly random and make it hard to use. But, uh, you know, the efficiency is nice. Uh, there's also uh, a couple artifacts that improve probability in your favor that, um, you know, air mages might be interested in. So, uh, yeah, like, I generally like this card, but I don't always play it. Uh, Dead of Night Demon, uh, two mana for two power with stealth. Um, Stealth is interesting, it makes it so that a creature can't be attacked or targeted until it loses stealth. And you generally lose stealth by uh, attacking or doing something else aggressive. Um, this can be a good combination with, um, you know, equipment, like there's a deed while, you're, while your creature is holding it, you control uh, the land it's on, so you know if you give this a, a deed and then send it over to someone else's site, you, know, you can control their site and they can't really do much about your creature without some specialized cards. Um, so uh, you know, stealth, stealth is it, it's also um, maybe some creatures can't be targeted by um, spell damage, and you need something to go and kill it, and this is good for it. Uh, it's a role player. I think I've put it in decks um, because at a minimum it's going to get to attack for two before it dies. So if someone's playing like a controlling deck with lots of removal effects, this will probably, probably still get to do something. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty into it. Uh, Sandstorm. So one mana. Uh, affected sites and units atop them can't be attacked or intercepted. Okay, cool. So they, they changed this substantially. So this is enchantment. Enchantments typically get placed on top of four squares. They have a pretty big area of effect. Um, this is neat in that um, it both can provide cover for your own guys to get where they're going. They can't be intercepted. And also it makes it so that sites can't be attacked. When a site is attacked, if you can't defend it, your avatar takes damage. And so this could be a way of providing some temporary coverage. Uh, it goes away at the start of your next turn, so it's a very short-term effect. I think I would tend never to play this card. Um, even limited, I think it has pretty weak applications, unless I'm missing something. Um, so, yeah, but... You know, the art's pretty, and um, maybe maybe some use will come up that uh, no one knows of yet. Uh, Sacred Scarabs, uh, two mana for one power. Uh, it flies, but when it dies, it explodes for three damage. Um, you know, m mostly this is uh, this thing explodes for three damage, and maybe it can chew away at your opponent's life total. And they don't want to destroy it because they don't want the damage because a lot of creatures have three power or less and would die. Um, you can also attack something with four power and, and kill it. Um, it's been like a little unwieldy in the fact that your opponent might kill it unexpectedly. Um, yeah, it can make it hard for me to get the damage where I want to go. So I don't tend to play this, but maybe someone very clever um, might be better with it. But, mm, yeah, I don't know, not a fan. Uh, Sandworm, this is the uh, fire response to uh, Sea Serpent. Four power for four strength. It's burrowing and it's landbound. 
Uh, land boom just means it can go on any non-water space without getting disabled, and since most of the spaces are land, uh, this is generally going to be okay. Uh, that said, you know, burrowing is not like will frustrate an earth player who's trying to bury your your, your creatures, but um, you know, I think drowning is a submerging is a far more common you know control deck strategy. So. Um, I think it's worse than Sea Serpent, but uh, I think that having four power is kind of a, an important break in terms of being protected from spells that do two and three damage, and there's a lot of creatures with two and three power. Uh, so I like, I like Sandworm, I think it's pretty good. And then uh, Spring River, it's the uh, common cycle of water sites. Uh, when you play these, you get to scry one. Um, I think it's another reason that water tends to make a good uh, controlling deck and stands alone well is because um, it's very good at filtering your, your own cards to draw the right card at the right time. All right, on to pack four. Um, Okay, uh, Divine Healing, this is um, one mana, uh, three Earth Threshold, you gain seven life, so you can see all these spells have triangles in the corner, um, that's how much of each element is required to cast the spell. So even though this only costs one mana, uh, you need to have at least three Earth Sites in place, or um, like an Onyx Core. And um, this means that you really can't cast it until turn three. Uh, this is probably designed to be more of like a late game spell. And um, seven is a lot of life, so it's a big boost. And um, I've played cards that were like just for life game in controlling decks, and seven is like enough life that um, you know, I'd consider playing them. So uh, I think this is a like pretty decent card. Uh, Thunderstorm, uh, four mana, summons an aura that uh, shoots lightning bolts at random things in it. And if it has no targets inside of it, and I think it's just, it's allowed to move one space anyway. So if, you know, your opponents move all their guys out, you can have the Thunderstorm slowly, you know, float to chase them. And when it has successfully fired three lightning bolts, uh, the storm dissipates. I, I think this is a super flavorful design, and um, watching it get iterated on uh, through the beta, uh, it, it, it went from being like you know unplayable to I think this is like a very solid damage spell. Like ultimately, you're paying four mana for nine damage, um, or you're you know controlling the board in a meaningful way. Uh, this is Host Eagle. It's a uh, three mana for three power, um, and um, it can carry weaker allied minions. So we've seen three mana for three power before. This one has one more air threshold, so it gets an extra ability, which is to carry weaker minions. Um, yeah, in general, I don't want to carry that many, um, you know, one or two power guys across the board, but it could come up. Um, yeah, I think this card's fine, but, you know, nothing super exciting. Uh, this card, on the other hand, is incredibly exciting, in my opinion. Uh, so this is the Queen of Midland. It's a unique, and uh, it costs five, one power, but uh, after an opponent draws a card, uh, if they have more cards than you, you may draw a card. So, um, you know, whether you're playing an aggressive strategy, and this is the top of your curve, so that you're out of cards by the time it comes up, um, or you're playing a ramp strategy where uh, you're playing a bunch of cards to help you get more mana and sights and emptying your hand, um, I think those are the two places that this card really shines. Though even um, you know multiple control decks where you think your opponent is going to be drawing more cards, 
Um, and so sometimes you do have fewer cards than they do. Um, like I said, drawing cards is like pretty rare and you often have to work for it. And uh, this card's very good at it. So um, yeah, really excited to open that and frequently have a card like this in my decks. Uh, Pit Vipers, uh, one mana for one power, burrowing and lethal. Uh, this is actually like kind of a decent uh, like control removal effect. Um, the fact that it's burrowing means that it can be very hard for your opponent to target it and get rid of it. And um, lethal means that anything it fights, it's probably going to kill. Unless they have an ability to ignore lethal damage. And, um, you know, in the case that your opponent doesn't have any creatures worth targeting because they're playing something controlling, um, you know, they can start attacking sites to deal damage to your opponent's avatar. And so, um, you yeah, like, know, I think this is actually just decent. Um, Highland Clansman. Uh, I could be wrong, but uh, this is 7 mana for 5 power with charge, which is Sorcerer's version of haste. Um, in my opinion, I think paying 2 extra mana over the like 5 power for 5 mana, um, this is like just too much of a premium for charge on it. I think even at like 6 mana, I'm not sure if I'd play it. Um, Maybe it's a good top deck late in the game, but I think more often than not, it's going to be in your hand and you're going to have trouble casting it or, you know. Um, so anyway, uh, I think not for me. Um, and uh, I would say probably of all of the, like, you know, comments I left from playtesting, this might have been the only one that feels unaddressed and I'm disappointed by, but uh, so it goes. Uh, this next card is Scourge Zombies. It says, whenever an allied mortal dies on land, you may summon Scourge Zombies from your cemetery to its location tapped. So, um, you know, this, this is the other kind of like undead card that, um, Earth has to get like a recurring, recurring horde of creatures. Um, you know, four mana for two isn't exciting, but if you have a deck that has a uh, you know, fair chunk of mortals and all of the peasant foot soldiers that are summoned by playing earth sites are, um, then, you know, this is, this, this, this can be a thing that's very hard for a control deck to deal with. It's just this kind of like recurring, you know, guys after guys, um, and uh, I'm excited about playing with it. I'm not sure you know, if the recursion is good enough, but uh, it's, it's stronger than it was during the beta, and during the beta it was decent, so um, that's exciting. Uh, spin attack, three mana. Uh, gotta stop bumping my camera here. Uh, three mana, uh, an ally strikes each enemy in its location, so if you have, it's, it's nice, you can just set up situations where, you know, you have a three power creature and there are a couple, three or less power creatures your opponent has and cut them all down. Um, I think this is particularly good with the battle mage, because um, then you're you always have a spellcaster uh, who has three power and um, just spin attack. Uh, another copy of Cauldron Crowns. Uh, Polar Bears. This is um, kind of a fun, flavorful design where it, it's two mana for two power, but um, the map has a north and a south border, and the Polar Bears are allowed to go from north to south or south to north. So, um, and there, there's kind of a whole cycle of water cards at different rarities that uh, kind of enable this, as well as a, a globe that will connect both north to south and east to west. So there's, you know, probably like a fast attack strategy where you play a bunch of these things and 
uh, can get to your opponent's spaces very easily. Um, sea Serpent again, Wall of Fire. Uh, Wall of Fire makes it so that creatures take three damage for passing through. Uh, three is kind of a sweet spot. Uh, a lot of a lot of the creatures have three or less power, so Wall of Fire is a meaningful deterrent. And um, I think this card's probably playable in in control decks. I think that um, you know, kind of moving it around in a way that makes it difficult for opposing creatures to attack your sights or you is a thing, and the wall of fire is like pretty decent at controlling what's possible. Uh, grapple shot, an ally shoots a projectile, if it hits a unit, an ally is dragged to that location and may strike the unit. Um, this is kind of like, it's like functionally a teleport in a straight line, and um, I think that It's not my favorite of the, you know, rapid movement cards, but, um, like, the straight line is a serious restriction, but um, certainly unlimited, I think it could be very useful, and I think with some specific spellcasters, like the Battle Mage, it probably has applications. Uh, Mage Slayer, three mana, two power, uh, Genesis, kill target, spellcaster, minion nearby. Most of the spellcaster minions aren't really worth killing. Like they often just have one power. So um, I think this is not a very good card, and I'd want some other kind of more versatile removal. Uh, and then uh, Arid Desert, this is the common cycle for fire, where uh, when you play it, it deals one damage to uh, each minion atop target nearby site. Uh, these are very good for combining with um, direct damage fire spells to hit critical amounts of power, um, and also, you know, are a reason why like one power minions are real squishy. All right, uh, on to the next pack. Okay, um, Mudflow, at the start of your turn, surface or unburrow each minion occupying target site nearby. So, um, I haven't seen like really heavy burrowing strategies. This feels like an anti-burrowing card, which I'm not sure is totally necessary, but... Uh, Phase Assassin, uh, this is a card that I really like. It's, it has Void Walk, so you can summon this to a Void. Um, and at the beginning of the game, there are quite a few voids, so it's a very flexible in terms of where you can summon it. And it says, whenever Phase Assassin enters the void, uh, he gains stealth. So, um, you know, this is a, another card that it's very hard for your opponent to target. Things can't be targeted while they're in the void, um, and they you know, can have an opportunity to kind of come out and strike something or like hit a site. So um, even in my like very direct damage based things that are low on creatures, uh, this is a creature that I feel pretty happy playing. Um, so I think that's a good open and it's exceptional. So I guess you're allowed to play up to three of them. I think they might have been elite before. I could be wrong. Uh, Gnome Hollows, it's an earth site where things that are have three or more power can't enter it. Um, this is kind of an awesome place for uh, sorcerer, for avatars to hide, because most avatars have one power, and um, you know, bigger creatures can't get to them. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting place. Uh, the Geistwood, so this is unique, uh, it says Genesis abilities here are also Deathrite abilities. Uh, this card feels like the sort of thing that you can um, just like build a deck around, um, right, like all the Genesis abilities, like drawing cards when Apprentice Mage comes into play, um, and 
there's also an avatar that um, you can summon things from your graveyard uh, and then any Genesis abilities they have count as oh no it's I think and then they trigger I think it, yeah I think it just lets you do that and then you have to sacrifice them immediately so you get their death rate abilities but if they have a Genesis ability and you did that in the Geist Wood, you'd get to do the death rate ability twice um, so and there's also like I mentioned with the witches you know, quite a few ways to sacrifice guys. So I think that um, the Geistwood feels like a place where you can um, get real rambunctious if you have the right other cards. Um, now, it's a site which can make it hard to find. Um, there are a couple crossroads where um, when you play them as a site, you get to, like, look at your top four sites and pick one, put it back on top, and then um, put the rest on the bottom. So there, there are some ways to kind of like dig for it. You're probably not going to be able to find it every game. It's just going to be a thing where like when you do find it, um, your deck gets to be like hypercharged. But um, I think I think it's a very exciting site and uh, you know probably one that I am unlikely to trade uh, unless I'm getting something really good for it. Um, teleport. It teleports an ally to the surface of a target site. Uh, I think this is one of the, you know, strongest movement effects. Uh, you don't draw a card with it, so, um, you know, sometimes it's better than Blink, sometimes it's worse than Blink. Um, I think it's particularly at its best for um, battle mages, if you get this on turn two and you can just teleport over to the other side and start attacking um, your opponent's avatar or their creatures. Uh, it's, it can be good times for you. Uh, send towns, nearby enemies, permanently lose stealth. Um, this doesn't come up a lot. I don't think I've ever built a deck around send towns. Uh, Highland Clansmen, I already complained about that one. Uh, Scourge Zombies, glad to have more copies. Spin Attack, yeah, like it. Ooh, ooh, all right, so this is my first foil. And um, personally, I say like these are pretty. And magic, I don't really like foils. Like they tend to warp. Um, you know, I don't know how good the sorcery foils over time are, but um, I like that it has this like shiny silver uh, writing. Uh, Atlantean Fate. Uh, it's a unique aura. So this is a foil unique, which is very rare. I think. I think there's supposed to be something like, you know, only like 250 of each of these in alpha. So, um, that's exciting. And um, I think this is a very powerful card. It, uh, it's an enchantment, and it submerges all of the, I think, non-ordinary sites that it's placed on. And then, uh, as part of its genesis, when it comes into play, uh, everything in those sites are submerged. So... Um, it's a powerful removal spell. Um, yeah, also, they um, they start making water and they stop making whatever they're made before. So it's also um, kind of like a, a mana denial uh, card in some ways. Uh, I think that this used to be elite. Uh, I think it was very wise to make this card unique and, um, like every water control based deck or honestly most of my control based decks I, I played this card just for its removal and disruption effects um yeah i really like it um and you know as far as like opening a foil goes um you know i think there are some cards that are uh, like you know bulk bin or less less popular cards uh, i think this card is exceptional and um, you know, I think it's not going to be as valuable as, as like, you know, power or alchemy nine, but, uh, right, this is, this is a very good one. Uh, Riptide, this is, um, kind of like water's answer to blink. Uh, okay. It's, um, it 
pulls the creature uh, toward a water site, uh, and you get to draw a card. Um, I've had a lot of good experiences. Uh, air and water decks with Blink and Riptide. Uh, getting to move my avatar around and cantripping while trying to uh, dig towards something. Um, and also just with things like uh, flooding effects, pulling um, opposing creatures into a place where they'll be in the water and vulnerable. Uh, I really like Riptide, I think it's a great card. Uh, overpower, one mana to give an ally plus two power until end of turn. Um, one mana for plus two power can do some interesting things. In general, I'm much more into uh, artifacts that give longer term boost in power uh, and would not tend to play this card. Uh, heat Ray, this is uh, three mana and you shoot a line of two damage. Uh, I think this is actually worse than the water spell, which makes it 3, 2, and 1 over 3 sites, because it's just 2, 2, and 2. Um, but, you know, this is, uh, you know, another fire damage effect that's totally fine, and usually stacked with some combination of playing deserts and other fire magic and creature damage. You know, you can stack it together to destroy something if it's not enough on its own. Uh, but Unravel, as mentioned, you know, come into skeletons. I want to bring them all back over and over again. And another uh, river. And then I'm going to move this stack out of this box. Uh, what you see on the bottom, I put it here so I, you know, I knew where my camera was looking, but it's the, um, the promo that is the box topper for um, the alpha boxes. It's a sorcerer which is, I think, the kind of like default avatar for the game. Uh, you can tap to player, player draw a site, which is kind of um, the default ability on almost every avatar, and then tap to draw a spell. Um, tap to draw a spell is very good. You know, there's, if you have all the sites that you need to cast the spells in your deck, you can basically choose to never draw a land again and Instead, uh, you know, draw a spell every turn. Um, so uh, I think that sorcerer is like quite strong, and um, you need to be doing like only a few of the other avatars are competitive with it. Um, so you know, for better or for worse, I think the this default avatar is um, one of the best. The uh, the beta version you started with. Instead of having tap to draw a spell, you started with one more spell than other characters, which made it good, but wasn't quite as good as it is now. Okay. Um, Torsheim or Trinket? This is um, actually one of the cards I was referring to, and I said I preferred artifacts to um, plus two strength temporarily. This is uh, one mana, the bear gains one power, and at the end of your turn, you return this to its owner's hand. So, um, I think these are great. You can, um, you know, if you have multiples, you just get to spend a few mana, put, put them down, have your creature attack with the extra strength, and then even if your creature dies, uh, you know, they come back to your hand. So, um, I think that these are really good for letting weaker creatures kind of attack upwards and letting you spend extra mana efficiently. Um, yeah, I think, um, I think I've put them in aggressive decks and been okay with them, um, but, uh, I'm guessing that there's a variety of places where they might be, like, decent. Um, I think that if your curve is higher, you probably just want to play, like, you know, bit big monsters, but this is kind of like hasty damage, so kind of the more you care about small things overperforming or getting damage out quickly, I think the better these are. Uh, Shield Maidens, uh, these are one of the few creatures that, um, they cost three, they have two power. Uh, nearby allies take one less damage. Uh, I've seen people kind of build um, you know, snowballs of 
creatures that you know have strength together and uh, shield maidens in there can make combat very hard so um, I like these I think that um, you know they're they're a specific strategy but if you're going to build a network of creatures that are powering each other up uh, they're great you know one note is putting all your guys on the same space is dangerous because there are removal spells that affect the entire space so these things that um, work on nearby you know having multiple squares where your creatures are supporting each other uh, I think is the way to go uh, lighthouse this is uh, dual land it makes uh, water and air um, I think just like magic if you want to play multicolor decks these dual lands are mandatory so um, I think that they're like pretty pretty good opens uh, Mirage uh, this lets you Play the Mirage in place of another fire site uh, and return the other fire site to your hand. Uh, it's not my favorite way to recur um, a fire site, and I don't think that there are any fire sites that are so good with their Genesis ability that I'd want to like pick them up and move them. So I think I would tend not to play this unless um, you know some new card is printed or um. I'm missing something. Uh, teleport, uh, we've already talked about. Uh, Wild Boars is the, the Earth version of one mana for two power. Um, Earth is the, Earth has the best creatures overall, so relatively speaking, Wild Boars is the least exciting in Earth. That said, uh, I think they're still you know totally fine and I've, I've put them into a bunch of decks. Uh, Sent Towns, I talked about. Highland Clansmen. Mm. Uh, Midnight Rogue. Uh, three mana for two power, stealth, and ranged. Um, you know, these guys are a little more effective at you know, delivering damage to some hard to get to target um, since you know, ranged makes it so that they don't have to walk quite as far. Uh, I'm not sure if like ranged and stealth are kind of a non-bow in that like you probably want one or the other and the two don't synergize that well. Um, if I want a bunch of stealthy creatures, I'll run this guy, but otherwise I like things that have more power or lower cost. More zombies. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. Uh, really also excited about this foil. So, uh, Wayfaring Pilgrim, uh, it's two mana for one power, and the first time a Wayfaring Pilgrim goes to each of the corners of the board, uh, they, you get to draw a card. And, um, you know, on the surface, the corners of the board are pretty far from each other, uh, but there's a card called Magellan's Globe that connects north and south and east and west. And when you have this card, all the corners are functionally next to each other. And the Wayfaring Pilgrim goes from a kind of slow way to, you know, gain cards to a very efficient card drawing engine. Um, so, I also think this guy costs three in playtesting, and now he costs two, which is amazing. Um, let me just make sure I have the text right. Yep, each corner of the realm. So, yeah, I think that um, this was a great card before, and at two mana, I think it's fantastic. Um, this is, um, like, this card is a reason to play Fire, uh, because it is such a st strong card draw tool, um, and I will also play it in every Fire deck. I think it used to be a Spellcaster, so I think they took away Spellcaster, uh, and I'm fine with that. There's, there's enough other Spellcasters in Fire... Um, and sites that enable, enable Spellcaster that um, I think I'd rather pay the one mana less. So uh, I think this is another example of a foil that will be highly played, and so I think it's like a great, great value open. Uh, Riptide. You know, talk about this. Like, it's uh, Overpower. Already covered it. Heat Ray. Already covered it. And then uh, on the Autumn River, 
which is another of the cycle of water cards that let you just scry one. Okay, on to the next pack. Okay, uh, Monster Hunter. Um, I think this is better than Mage Hunter. I think that a lot of monsters are much bigger creatures. So this is um, you know, three mana to cast, uh, two power. Uh, when it comes to play, it kills a nearby monster. Uh, I think that, like, assuming a um, metagame that has monsters, this card is pretty good. Uh, there are also some cards that let you uh, return a creature to your hand, so I can imagine if there are enough monsters uh, setting up synergy loops where you you know play this multiple times to kill multiple monsters. Um, so yeah, not a bad card. Uh, Poison Dagger and makes the bear have lethal. Um, this is probably a card that's great in limited, like when you're drafting. Uh, I think for constructed, I'd rather have more power. Um, I uh, I have seen people set up um, poison dagger plus ranged unit, <coughs> so that the ranged unit can like pick anything off, which I think is much better than putting out a melee unit where the melee unit dies and it takes something else with it. Um, I think particularly ranged units that can kind of like hit and run where you just set up kind of a thing that can do controlled removal. Uh, so okay, I kind of talked myself into it. I think if you're if you're trying to build some like ranged control combos, uh, I think poison dagger can help because like a lot of the ranged units top out at like two or three damage, and if you want to kill some bigger things, uh, you might need a poison dagger. Uh, albatross when a unit kills a cursed albatross, kill that unit's other allied minions that's nearby. Um, I think this is hard to trigger, but, um, if you want something that, um, gets to pick away at your opponent's position, I guess you, you trigger it by attacking them. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a finicky removal effect, uh, but it, it can be quite strong. So I think it's probably playable. Um... Alright, Zephyr and Airship, 4 mana for 3 power, uh, with flying and movement plus 2. So, incredibly mobile, and can also carry guys around. <coughs> um, I think that this card is probably good. Um, and... I don't know the exact world where you're ferrying around a bunch of guys, like maybe it's an Air and Earth deck. But... Um, like, in terms of, of troop mobility, I'm not sure any card is better, so um, I'm, I'm sure people will come up with interesting uses for it. Uh, Wicker Mannequin, one mana for one power and a non-fire spellcaster. I'm pretty sure this is, like, unplayable unless someone really needs spellcasters. Like, I just, I think this is not a very good card. Um... Trojan Cavalry, 4 mana for 3 power, uh, with charge. Um, I, I don't love uh, paying the full mana for charge, but I understand why it's like that. Um, I wish it had a number of power other than 3, so that it matched up better with other creatures. Um, I think that if you're playing some kind of like aggressive fire deck, this card could have a place in it. Um, yeah, but I think mostly it's not really what I want to be playing. Uh, Pirate Ship, it's like a Sea Serpent, but it doesn't submerge in exchange. You get one extra power. Um, you know, I think if you're a controlling water deck, this is probably worse. Though, like, if you're a controlling deck, you know, four mana for five power is, like, pretty interesting. Um, I think if you're not planning on, like, submerging the entire board, uh, Pirate Ship is an incredibly good rate, and five power trumps almost every, like, early game creature, uh, so I think it can be very good for stabilizing the board. Like, if you're just, like, some kind of mid-range value strategy, 
I think Pirate Ship is excellent. Uh, fire Bolts, two mana to shoot, three one mana bolts in a single direction. Um, I think this card is solid. I put it in all of my burn decks. Um, you know, I think that three damage is enough to kill a lot of early creatures. So, I think even in like a fire oriented deck where like it's more controlling, uh, I think it's good. And um, yeah, I think it's just like a solid value card. It can combine really effectively with desert to um, you know wipe out a few guys because the the desert will do one damage to everyone there. Uh, Snow Leopard, this is the air version of one mana for two power. It's totally fine. Uh, Blood Ravens, one mana for one power. Uh, airborne, uh, but every time they deal damage, you gain life. Uh, I think that this card, like, there isn't that much life gain. Um, one power isn't that good, but I think if you play equipment in a deck with these, um... It can give you a huge amount of life. So I think like in some controlling strategies, these have a lot of possibility. Um, Ormond Harpooners. Uh, this is an example of a foil I'm not that excited about. Uh, you know, two mana for two power, and they have the ability to tap and basically shoot a harpoon to drag something towards them. Um, I do like that they have, you know, a tap ability to deal damage. There are a bunch of guys with one toughness. Um, that said, I just think, like, two power is pretty fragile. And, um, I have trouble, like, figuring out what deck they're a good fit for. Uh, Rimland Nomads, I think we've already talked about, Entangled Terrain. Uh, this makes minions lose airborne and become immobile for three turns. Um, maybe Earth has some trouble with dealing with airborne units. And maybe if, like, hit and run archers with poison bows are a thing, this card's kind of interesting. But I think there's just harder removal that's available, and entangling guys isn't really where it's at. Um,. Yeah, I don't think this card is good. I haven't really come up with a use for it. You know, could be wrong. Um, great thing about new games is people come up with all kinds of new strategies. Um, Miracle Workers, Genesis. You may return a minion that died this turn from your cemetery to your hand. So, um, this, this is, uh, I think, quietly part of the cycle of a cheap, a cheap source of card advantage for your element. Um, you know, miracle workers could return a monster uh, slayer. Um, you can also like cycle miracle workers with each other so that like you have recurring blockers. Uh, I think there are a lot of things that they can do, um, and I think they're probably pretty playable. Um, you know, you have to have them at the right time, like right after your thing dies, but uh, being able to like recast the right card or cycle some guys is generally pretty powerful. Um, so uh, I think it's good in like mid-range strategies, though, you know, more controlling or more burning strategies could cause trouble. And then uh, another river. So, uh, Phantasmal Shade, uh, this card uh, it has, it's another, like, this costs three and you get four power, but whenever it's struck, it's destroyed. Um, this is really punishing for decks that don't play creatures, uh, because they generally don't have strikes other than the Avatar, and the Avatar usually wants to be tapping to do other things. So, um, and also, like, a lot of strikes happen in combat, and with four power, it'll usually also take down whatever it's fighting. 
So um, I'm a pretty big fan of this creature, and it costs two air threshold for that reason. Um, so that you know, it takes some work to cast down turn three. Like if you don't have enough air th air dedication, uh, you can't play it on time. Uh, Secret tunnel. Uh, this is uh, burrowed allies can move as if this were adjacent to your other sites. So I think this is like super thematic because basically things can move here and then to another underground location and it really does feel like a secret passage and um, yeah, like makes our threshold. So I think this is like, I haven't played like heavy burrowing strategies, but um, I imagine uh, either there is already good like burrowing synergy that I like haven't seen or that you know, as more cards come out there will eventually be a good burrowing deck and it feels like this card will be an important part of it. Um, Minecart Madness is um, this turn uh, <laughs> your units can move between any sites in a chosen span of land as if they were adjacent. So. Uh, this is also, um, <coughs> like, things can just kind of move pretty freely between Earth. Uh, this is, I think, within the Earth uh, element. Probably the most powerful move-enabling card. And, um, yeah, this is actually just, like, a great card. Um, there are a bunch of... Uh, like, this has changed from its old version. Um, there are a bunch of decks that built Earth armies and then had to play air spells to move creatures long distances. And uh, not having to splash air to do that, but having an in-element effect that does it um, makes me pretty happy. Um, so I'm, I'm actually pretty pleased with that card. Uh, Belfry, it's a monument. So it's just like an artifact that sits on top of a site, and uh, it untaps uh, nearby allies. So um, there are a variety of cards that tap to do things, and um, also when you move, you tap. Uh, but when you're untapped, you can do things like defend and intercept, or you know, use your tap abilities. So uh, the Belfry feels like a fun kind of combo building card, and I'm sure it has a lot of good applications. Uh, Unravel destroys artifacts or undead minions at a location up to two steps away. This is kind of a cycle of destroying a specific set of things. Um, I think that... Uh, not every dark deck has undead or artifacts. So this is the kind of thing where I might play like one of it and then or two of it and then have common sense, which is the Earth Tutor for ordinary magic, to go and look for it if it's the, the spell that I needed. Uh, Wild Boars, yeah, again one power for two mana. The Night Road we've talked about. Sedge Crabs, one mana for three power, but they can only move themselves sideways. So in general. Um, on any given row, uh, the same player is going to be the one who controls uh, the spaces. So if you don't have a way to push or pull or teleport them forward, um, they're never going to be able to threaten your opponent. Um, so they're kind of like interesting if you're looking for a cheap way to defend yourself. Like one mana for three is very efficient. Um, but they're probably not flexible enough for most decks. Uh, pit Vipers we've talked about, Polar Bears we've talked about. Uh, here's another Cyclops, but in foil. And um, like I think the six mana for six is playable, so you know, I expect that to either get into a deck or get traded. Um, bats we've talked about. Nomads we talked about. Apprentice Wizard, good. Ordinary, uh, so I think I need I need four of them for basically every deck that plays there. Uh, and then uh, the air uh, cycle of commons uh, gives you an extra mana the turn they come into play, which as a magic player I was pretty shocked by. And um, in general, it's very strong. Like I like 
I like playing air in part because uh, getting an extra mana to power out more powerful cards is pretty appealing. Um, all right, next we have uh, another copy of Secret Tunnel. Uh, Holy Ground, uh, Genesis, each nearby avatar heals three life. Um, you know, good for, for attrition, uh, blunts the attack of like aggressive fire ducks, uh, ruins, always happy to get a dual land. Uh, Highland Princess, Genesis, search your spell book for an artifact that costs one or less, reveal it and put it into your hand, shuffle. Uh, so, this is unique, so, you know, happy to open it, and... Um, much like Magic the Gathering, there are a fair chunk of artifacts that cost one that are extremely useful. Um, particularly, there's the whole cycle of cores, which provide a, a mana and a threshold. Uh, so the ability to go and play a multicolor deck with her in it and search for something is nice, though she costs two air thresholds, so the chance that you have the two air threshold on the um, first or on the second turn requires that about two thirds of your sites produce air threshold, which isn't the most common. But it's also you know if you can't play her until um, you know a little later and you know half your lands produce air threshold, you know probably fine. Um, but I like I mean I like air because it has these tutors and I think that she is a like very fine toolbox card. Also, um, you know, if you combine her with things like um, the medics so that like when she dies you can bring her back from the graveyard and get another artifact later. Um, and I think she just has a lot of utility and as more sets come out her utility will increase. Um, so I think a, a very good card. Um, this uh, Eremos Mercenaries, uh, three mana for three power, but you can discard a random card, uh, which can come either out of your sights or your spells um, to play them. I think that if you could control what you discarded, uh, this card would be amazing, and you know, I'd probably try and play it in an Earth deck with skeletons and zombies, since the skeletons and zombies have other ways of coming back. Um, and these guys are mortals, so they even interact well with the zombies, but given that they discard a random card, um, you can really hurt yourself if you, you know, discard an early sight. Um, so I, I think they almost might be better later in the game when, um, you know, maybe you have, like, not great cards in your hand, uh, like duplicate copies of things that you don't need, and you're looking to cast, like, two or three spells on a turn, and you can, like, power these guys out without spending any mana. Um, so I think they're interesting. Ah, I should mention, there, there are artifacts that let you control random effects, and so maybe if you're playing the artifacts that let you generate the random effect twice or just choose the random effect, um, maybe these guys get better. Um, but I think... Mostly my rating is uh, sus, unless you're doing something sneaky. Uh, extinguish, the Spanish is all fire minions and fire auras occupying a site. Um, I haven't seen what kind of like tournament rules there are for sorcery. Like I don't know if there's sideboarding like there is in magic, but this feels mostly like a sideboard card. Um, I guess the alternative is there's like the seer uh the seer lets you look at your top card each turn and decide whether or not to draw it and maybe if you're playing like a seer deck you can have some really targeted hate cards like this but um you're probably just better off playing other cards that are more versatile um muck lampreys these guys have uh burrowing and submerged so uh maybe the bats were like flying and Burrowing and I, oh, the bats are probably flying and burrowing. So these are actually the guys who are great at gathering treasure. Um, minor explosion, three damage, three power, 
three mana to do three damage to everything in a space. I think this card is extremely good, and when I say that I want creatures that have four or more power, uh, it is because of cards like this where you know three damage is the norm, and having more than that gives your creature a fighting chance. Uh, Fire Harpoons deals one damage to target minion above or below an adjacent water site and pulls it to the caster's location. Uh, this is an interesting way to like pull cards out of the water because um, like submerged creatures can be kind of a pain. Um, that said, it's like a pretty narrow effect, so I'm, I'm not sure I've ever put it in a deck. Um, I think I'd rather have some more versatile answer. Uh, Swamp Buffalo, uh, one mana for two power, you know, uh, very efficient. Uh, I'm not sure I've ever built an aggressive water deck, but maybe they exist. Uh, Wall of Fire, like I said, effective. Grapple Shot we've already talked about, Mage Slayer we've talked about. Boss Control, two mana for three power, this is another, like, Earth is just very efficient and so has a uh, cycle of creatures that are all power above the mana cost curve, and I think that if you're playing a swarm of creatures, it's extremely good. And then we have uh, another river in the water cycle. Um, right. Do a couple more packs. I think I'm gonna go all the way through this uh, left column of the booster box. So it'll be like 13 packs total when we're done. Uh, so, another Cyclops, uh, another Updraft Ridge, uh, Quagmire, units occupying nearby sites are immobile until the end of your next turn. Uh, I think that this is a really useful card for any deck that wants to play a longer game. So this is just like a, a punishing effect against aggressive decks. Fuck yeah. Alright. Uh, Philosopher's Stone. Uh, this is <laughs> super exciting. Uh, this is one of, like, this is like, is it like Black Lotus? Is it like a multicolored Mox? Uh, hard to say, but it makes it so that the first spell of each element costs one mana less. So if you're playing a multicolored deck, it's possible that it's worth up to four mana on a turn if you cast a spell from each element. Uh, I've never really built decks that were more than three element decks, but, um, you know, still, if I got three mana off, I'd feel thrilled. Um, and even at the worst case, you know, it just gives you one mana off if you're a single color deck. Um, and that's still a totally fine mode. Uh, it's also, like, one of the best targets for the princess in terms of, you know, one mana artifacts. And, um... Interestingly, uh, I don't always want to play this card in hyper-aggressive decks. Like, they often have all the mana that they need in sights, and I don't want to draw, like, a dead card that doesn't convert into damage. But in basically every, every other deck, uh, this thing is great, and um, I think it's kind of like the, the ultimate chase rare in alchemy. So, um, excited to open it, um, you know, it's the thing that I thought I might have to trade heavily for, and so just, you know, uh, ripping one makes me super happy. Um, mortality, kill all mortal minions at target location up to two steps away. Um, so this is like a anti-mortals card. Uh, I think this is, you know, another of the cycle of ordinary cards that if I had common sense I might you know, stack them and tutor for it, but probably just want more generalized answers that are expensive. Uh, Petrosian Cavalry we've talked about, Pirate Ship we've talked about, you know, you know. Uh, Snow Leopard, I think you've already seen the, the one mana for two power in air. Uh, Prentice Wizard, okay. Men of Lang, this is one that excites me. It says, uh, whenever Men of Lang, uh, strikes an avatar, the avatar discards a random card. So, um, it's pretty hard to kill avatars, you know, when you retrieve them to zero life, the game doesn't end, they go into death's door, and, 
Um, they basically, you know, get, get a turn to, um, you know, kind of like stabilize. So, um, yeah, and there, there aren't a ton, like, you know, you can tr make a plan to destroy someone's sights um, in the, the long game, but uh, attacking their cards in hand is a relatively unique effect. I think there are only two cards that do it. And <laughs> um, I'm pretty interested in, like, this as a, like, control or uh, mid-range card. Um, I think combining it with things like um, you know, making it stealthy so that you're sure it's going to get to connect or giving it um, like a bow so that it has range um, or giving it like, you know, teleporting it so that it you know, goes from being out of range to making attack or teleporting it and then making it stealthy so that you get to do it more than once. Um, I think that decks that are playing a long game and trying to curate their hand like to sculpted for a strategy i think that these are extremely disruptive of and that said they only have two power they're you know very fragile and so they, they take a lot of work to make function but uh, i think that there's like high, high upside if you figure out how to make it good so you know it's definitely a card that i just like think about building decks around <coughs> excuse me uh, Blink we've talked about, Sea Serpent we've talked about, and this is the um, the tower and the, the air tower cycle. Okay. Oh, all right. We've got three more packs in this column. So many packs. And we've seen a lot of cards, so these are going a little faster, but. Um, I guess I, I hope you're enjoying uh, <laughs> ripping packs together. Um, cool. So, uh, Vantage Hills. Uh, range units atop the site have plus one range. I think that um, there's definitely like mid-range and controlling strategies that use ranged units. And giving plus one range is very useful. So like, I think that's a, a key build around me, and um, you know I want to collect a set of them to build decks with. Uh, kite Archer, immediately after performing a ranged attack, Kite Archer might take a step. So this is uh, like another hit and run card. And um, yeah, I think interesting with Poison Dagger. Uh, here's another Monster Hunter. Uh, Squirming Mass, so this is Elite. It says, whenever a nearby minion dies, Scoring mass permanently gains its power. Uh, this thing can get like out of control pretty quickly. Uh, you can like summon it near combat and then just make the combat happen. Or if your opponent has, you know, a few guys in a space and you're planning on fireballing them, um, well, you have to make the scoring mass live for a turn. But um, you know, like it's the sort of thing where maybe if you like make it stealthy. It can just grow well stealthy until it's really outsized. So I think it's like an interesting build around me. It's elite, so you can play two copies of it. Uh, Wall of Fire we've talked about. Grapple Shot we've talked about. Mage Slayer we've talked about. Entangled Terrain. Uh, critical Strike. The next time an ally strikes a unit this turn, it deals double damage. Uh, don't love this card. But it probably has a place in some kind of maybe like a rampy deck where you know you have creatures with like five or six power and you're trying to like just deal damage to your opponent kind of efficiently. Um, or maybe it's like next time an ally strikes. Yeah, I'm just not really sure like what the place for it is. Um, maybe like a battle mage deck where like your battle mage you equip it so it has more power and then you're just trying to like DPS your opponent and yeah it's probably not bad for that. Uh, two man for two power with lethal. Um, 
Uh, of the two mana for two power creatures, uh, these are ones that I feel least bad about. I feel like um, you know they can either just be attacking your enemy sites for two. Uh, because other avatars have one power, uh, these can fight an enemy avatar and not die. So um, you know they, they can kind of like keep doing damage over and over, and you know at worst they're trading with other creatures because they're lethal. Uh, so I think that these are okay. I'm not sure whether they make it into my decks, but um, yeah, I'm always thinking about it. Uh, Wicker Mannequin, no love for it. Firebolts, love it. Blood Ravens, um, you know, interesting build around crabs we've talked about, and uh, another tower. So. Yep. All right, pack number 12. All right, Brobbing Nag Bullfrog. Uh, when it comes to play, it swallows a creature, and then when it leaves play, it frees the creature. Um, I think these are pretty interesting. You know, I think three mana for three power is acceptable. And I think that um, having it remove a creature means that if your opponent is playing creatures, um, you can handle a problem at least temporarily, and if your opponent isn't playing features, like, you know, it's still a reasonable beat stick. So, I think it's a very fine card. Uh, Oasis. So, another dual land. I always happy to see that. Floodplain. Once you're in your turn, you may flood an adjacent site this turn. Uh, so, this is great for um, expanding your body of water. Um, you know, it makes it so that your sea serpents can get in there and attack, or you can drown things in a space, or riptide uh, a space unexpectedly. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Floodplain. It's a key card in water decks. Uh, Sky Baron, this is uh, an elite. And uh, six power for six mana is very good in a flying feature, and it makes everything else lose flying. So, um, in general, like, I really like this card. Um, I think that if I'm playing any kind of rampy air deck, or maybe even a controlling air deck, um, I think that this is just like a strong controlling creature, um, and like a good high-end creature. Uh, Exorcism, Banish All Demon and Undead Minions at target location up to two steps away. Yeah, common sense target, maybe. Um, Rain of Arrows, deal one damage to each above ground minion. Uh, there are a lot of above ground minions with one power. Um, I'm not sure that I want to play this card still. Um, like, I think I want more focused damage. But I can imagine a metagame with enough, like, strong utility creatures at one power that um, it becomes a good idea. And, you yeah. know. Uh, again, another reasonable common sense target. Uh, drown, submerge target minion, or artifact to fable. Um, I think, yeah, when, when I say I want a more generalized uh, killing spell, uh, this kills most things uh, if they're in a water space. And water is pretty good at making water spaces where it needs them to be. Uh, another copy of Miracle Workers, Old Cyril Anchorman, uh, Order Militia. Yeah, summons a bunch of militia dudes. Camel, sleep. Uh, roaming monster. It's uh, five mana for four power, so I don't really like its rate. Uh, but you can summon it anywhere, so it's kind of like a free teleport thrown in. Uh, I think you can probably summon this to spaces that are annoying enough that uh, it's worth it. So I think that this card's playable. Um... Like, probably better in aggressive strategies than controlling strategies. Um, but, um, yeah, because, like, for aggressive strategies, being able to place it in your opponent's spaces to attack them is interesting. If you're controlling, you're more likely to be defensive, and your opponent's more likely to be sending things after you, so it's a little less useful. But, um, yeah, I think, interesting card. Uh, land Surveyor, uh, I like these quite a bit. Um, 
It's uh, two mana for one power, but uh, when it comes into play, you get to draw a sight. So, um, you know, I think this is a good example of one of those cards that the uh, the site where it's like every Genesis ability is also a death right ability because then you could like get two sites. But uh, in general, you start with three sites in hand and get to play one each turn, and then um, depending on the curve of your deck, will then spend your avatar's actions drawing sites and playing them alternatingly until you know you have enough. Uh, Land Surveyor kind of lets you break that and get sites faster, um, so that you can like play them faster. So it's, it's it's like a pretty essential part of many ramping strategies. Uh, and then an Air Desert. And, you know, I particularly like the world where you get to play the land surveyor, get the site, so the card's kind of replaced itself, and then if you can sacrifice it for value some other way. Um, Watchtower, enemy units atop nearby sites permanently lose stealth. I uh, haven't had stealth be a big part of the game, but um, if it were, yeah, good counter card. Uh, another copy of Floodplain, uh, exciting. Uh, bedrock. This is uh, it can't be um, moved, destroyed, or modified. Uh, in a world in which water players are trying to flood your stuff, um, having a space that is reliably not water can be really important. Um, and there's also yeah, there's just a lot of good reasons that having a space that won't be destroyed is important. And uh, I'm a big fan of this card for that reason. Um, Sneak Thief has stealth and you can tap to steal an artifact out of the hands of another unit here. Uh, I think because the Philosopher's Stone and Cores seem like they might play an important part in people's mana bases, um, Sneak Thief being able to like steal them and then divert them to your own mana base feels uh, important for any mana denial strategy. and. Uh, possibly very useful for ramping strategies. Um, so I can definitely see a world where um, you know dueling sneak thieves are a thing, and maybe that's a world where observatories are also important. Uh, Vile Imp, uh, two mana, two power. Um, and just to be clear, the sneak thief, when it steals something, it's still hidden. So they can steal a lot of stuff, and you need to do something clever to get rid of them. Um, right, sorry. So Violent, it uh, comes to play and then uh, deals two damage to target an adjacent unit. Uh, I think in general I like this more than Heat Ray. Like it's hard to line up Heat Ray so that you're getting two effective targets, and I think Violent being able to come in and it is two power and then it deals two damage uh, combines well to kill things that are either you know two or three power, and it's inexpensive enough at two. That you could combine two two mana effects for two damage to kill something at four power. So I like this card and I think it probably goes in certainly red, fire aggressive decks, and um, it might even have its place in mid range or controlling strategies because of its efficiency. Um, tough to turtles, yeah, kind of a fire hoser in that it you know ignores the first fire damage that comes in. Uh, I mean, any damage that comes in, but uh, Blizzard. Uh, this is like Sandstorm. It, um, I really can't think of a use for it, but maybe someone else will. Uh, Riptide, we've talked about. Wild Boars, we've talked about. Scorpions, we've talked about. Midnight Road, we've talked about. Big Vipers, Polar Bears, Swan Maidens, and uh, a river. So, yeah, that's a. Uh, 13 packs of sorcery from the alpha set, and um, I'll probably probably open more packs later, and um, probably figure out a way to skip past the cards that we've talked about and seen. You know, I think most of the uh, ordinary is in extraordinaries, and you know, focus on talking about elites and uniques. So. Uh, Thanks for spending this time with me, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to um, put them in the, the comments and I'll try and respond, and um, I guess if you subscribe and I see more, make more videos, you'll see them.
Uh, talk to you later. Bye.